I spoke too soon, last time. Aquila's hand did actually take some damage from Adonai's poison arrow. The matriarch simply ejects the poison by exploding the aura in her. How convenient. The attention shifts back to a human, which terrifies the undead old man. Aquila is more curious about the divine archer Adonai than about a human's treachery. This will be a showdown between the night fox and the divine archer. Aquila launches the first attack, but the divine archer easily dodges her arrows and counters with his own. The battle quickly spreads to a wider area as arrows pepper the forest like artillery strikes. The cowardly old man does not participate in this battle directly though. He spies on the battle from a distance with a magic eye. The battle will not be easy for the Night Fox, since Adonai is an undead funneling what seems to be infinite energy. Aquila is superficially injured in this ranged duel and understands that she is at a disadvantage. The two legends once more collide with their arrows which Aquila uses to close the distance. With the dust as cover, Aquila springs a surprise close-ranged attack, but the Divine Archer easily dodges encounters just like before. However, this time the Night Fox temporarily stuns Adamai with a 1-2 combo. This allows the Matriarch to land a critical hit which decimates the Divine Archer's shoulder and part of his face. Whether it is a good or bad thing for Aquila, Adamai held back against her. She repays his kindness with a killing blow to put him out of his undead misery. A human is not going to simply let that go though. A dark force possesses the damaged parts of Adamai and stops the killing blow. The Divine Archer is forced to continue the fight against what will remain in his undead husk. Adonai's body is slowly overwhelmed by dark energy and fully possessed by a human's necromancy spell. The clash between the two legends draws out the monsters who live in the deep forest. The massive A-rank class creatures come to investigate the commotion, but are instantly dispatched by the Divine Archer's arrows. Even Aquila is shocked by this display of power. A human quickly steers this strength towards the Night Fox, forcing her to take evasive action. However, she is not fast enough to dodge these shots and is slowly being weakened by the poison from taking even the light damage. The Matriarch resolved herself to finish this in the next attack and uses a skill she developed personally. The first arrow misses, and the second arrow is blocked, but the first arrow rebounds with aura and gets a fatal hit on Adam Nye through the back of his throat. Well, a fatal hit for living entities that is. The Divine Archer is undead, and thus this skill fails to eliminate him. In the meantime, Bitcher manages to bring Anne to safety and rushes back to stop Ahuman's necromancy spell. Our hound of a protagonist easily deduces the old location and charges in. But things never are that easy in these stories. A human still controls other undead ancestors aside from Adam I, which intercept Bicker. Back at the battle between the Night Fox and the Divine Archer, Aquila finally kneels from her injuries. Her seeming defeat fills a human with overconfidence, but he forgets that the protagonist of this story is actually Bicker. Bitcher has his own machinations for the barbarians of the Deep Forest. The undead protecting the old necromancer are effortlessly defeated using Beelzebub and the Six Fang. Hohman's undead heart is struck with fear as he calls for Adam Nye to come save his sorry self. As if Aquila will simply let the Divine Archer go though, so she disrupts Adam Nye with a kick to the side which causes the arrow to go off course. Before another arrow can be fired from the Divine Archer's bow, Bitcher closes the distance and dismembers Ahuman's hands and decapitates him. The old Saab is already defeated before he realizes it. The rest of the Baroque warriors continue to engage the Death Knights in battle, but just as the situation starts to look dire, the undead ancestors fade away as the necromancy spell is broken by Bicker. Before the Divine Archer completely fades away, he pushes his bow towards Aquila. She wishes him a peaceful rest as he disappears. A human screams his final regrets and laments how close he was to victory. Despite being a failure of a shaman for the clan, Bitcher acknowledges how surprisingly talented the old man is. The loud dismembered head of the shaman refuses to shut up, but Ahun puts an end to this noise. The grandson regretted not being able to finish the job earlier and apologizes, but Bitcher forgives him. With that, a human is finally defeated, and the Baroque warriors are victorious over the undead. Unfortunately, the warriors return to a desolated village. A hole informs them all that the Madam Eight Legs had attacked the village while they were gone. The devious old shaman had set a signal that attracted the spider monster. 
The Baroque are not even able to exact revenge on the Matamate legs because they classify it as a natural disaster instead of a living entity. However, Bitcher intends to put an end to this monster. He talks to Aquila in hopes of getting more information about Madame Eight Legs. While the tribes have documentation about the evil spider goddess, Bitcher does not understand why the tribes did not band together using this information to defeat the Madame. According to the Baroque record of the Divine Archer Adam May's battle against the Madame, the legs of the spider were akin to a hydra's head. Cutting it off made it regrow as two and as more legs were destroyed, the more they multiplied. Even Adamai's arrows were only capable of destroying the legs and could not damage the body. Aquila strongly advises against hunting Madame Eight Legs. Defeating Aquila and Adamai would be nearly impossible for Bitcher at his current strength. But fighting a monster is not the same as fighting a person. In his past life, there were many demonic monsters that were on the level of Madame Eight Legs. These experiences imparted an important lesson. Monsters have weaknesses and act out of instinct. Bitcher believes that if he understands the monster well enough, then he can defeat it. For several days, Bitcher stakes out the Madam's lair to observe its routines. From his investigation of the mountain the Madam lives in, we learn that it is actually hollowed out. The spider monster's webs are also too tough to cut with a graduate's level of mana. Deeper into the nest, Bitcher discovers a sack of the Madam's eggs and steals one. But this seems to alert the boss monster and forces him to hide. The spider did not detect Bicker, but it seemed to return based on instinct. Bitcher returns to the village to go over his research. Ian had not seen Bicker in a while due to his efforts to look into Madame Eight Legs. Bitcher allows her to come into this tent for once, and she discovers his research. We learn here that the protagonist is leaving this barbarian arc behind finally and returning to the Baskerville clan. However, he wants to eventually return to the Baroque one day. To ensure that there is a place to return to, he intends to kill Madame, Eight Legs. Ian believes in Bickard despite his unrealistic goals, since he constantly defies expectations. We end this chapter with Bitcher acquiring one more skill using Beelzebub, Regeneration from the Swamp Marsh Salamander. The next chapter begins with a surprising moment. Alhan, who now considers Bitcher a brother, builds him a house. This is a huge contrast from how they started off since the man hated Bicker with passion. I guess this also means Bitcher will not be taking revenge on him in the future. Before Al Hun can bring Bitcher this news, he already left for his death match against Madame Eight Legs. Bitcher meticulously planned for this hunt. Today is the day this evil spider goddess dies. The first strike lands using the Baskerville Six Fang, which severs one of the Madame's legs. The leg quickly regenerates like a Hydra's head and doubles. A retaliation strike of poison sprays all around Bicker and lands a hit on his arm. However, this is why Bitcher acquired the regeneration skill in the last chapter. He lopped his own arm off and it regrows. This evens the playing field between the protagonist and the spider monster, since both are able to regenerate lost limbs. The fight continues on with Bicker continuously breaking spider legs and his own legs. Eventually, Bicker retreats to the top of the lair. Madame Eight Legs' constant regeneration has created too many legs and now hinders her movements. In response to this, the Madame uses her webs to attack, but to no avail. Normal flames can't burn her webs, but the Hellfire skill is extremely effective. Combined with the gas exuded from the many corpses collected by Madame Eight Legs, Bitcher detonates the lair. Bitcher's research into Madame Eight Legs uncovered an interesting thing. The spider monster pushed the barbarian tribes from her territory, which made the tribes chase away the monsters along their path, which included the Cerberus. This was how she maintained her position as apex predator and eliminated her own weaknesses. The trap is seemingly successful and Bitcher walks away from his act of arson. Madame Eight Legs will slowly suffocate inside her own nest, which should kill her. But our protagonist should know better than to let his guard down so early. The spider boss destroys the entire mountain to escape the burning pits of Hellfire. It is a rare moment to see Bitcher actually underestimates his opponent to this extent. Madame Eight Legs launches a burst of poison into the sky in an attempt to flush out Bitcher since it is now blind. The damage to her is extensive, with the Hellfire burning away the eyes and sensory hairs. Even the main body's carapace is damaged from the reckless breakout from the mountain. Bitcher does not hesitate to take advantage of the situation and attack, but is still unable to break into the main body 
Sadly for him, his advantage is taken away as Madame Eight Legs regenerates her eyes instantly. This was not something that was found as part of research. No one was documented damaging the spider monster in other ways after all. Both of Bicker's legs are destroyed in the retaliatory attack, and he is regenerating significantly slower now due to lack of stamina. While still laying on the ground regenerating, the specter of his vengeance criticizes him. For him, his only goal should have been killing Hugo, but yet here he is fighting an unrelated monster for an unrelated goal. The specters seem to believe that Bitcher has become weaker due to his current environment. They believe that he has forgotten his revenge and has become misguided. In the past, he followed all his orders and was chained to the clan. However, he was betrayed by Hugo and executed. This hatred is what drives his new life, or at least that should be the case. Bitcher has always followed the leash of purpose that was given to him, but his truest desire in the end is freedom. Even the desire for revenge was just another chain around his neck that determined his fate. His true regret was being a hound of a singular purpose. It is what led him to be killed by Hugo in the past. Bitcher's purpose for fighting now is to live free and of his own will and volition. As if answering his resolve, powerful arrows strike Madame Eight Legs. Aquila, Aeon, and the rest of the Baroque clan's warriors arrive to support Bicker. I suppose it is an apt thing to say that because Bitcher is no longer singularly focused on revenge, he is able to form healthy relationships with others. Our protagonist tries once more to break the Madame's shell, but fails. Aquila, in her unwavering respect for Bicker's resolve to fight against fear itself, launches a powerful arrow to open a path. Taking this opportunity, the unchained hound pierces straight into the madam with the first fang. He continues to iterate through the fang techniques upward to the sixth fang and ends the chapter in a flurry of crimson. That covers up to chapter 60 of Revenge of the Sword Clan's Hound. Sorry for the shorter update, but this is the most recent English translation of this story as of now. We will find out whether or not Bicker finally kills Madam Eight Legs and ends this barbarian arc next time. Also, if you haven't watched the previous videos, you will find the links in the description below.